The Line, Saudi Arabia Saudi Arabia unveiled the line in January 2021, describing it as a city like no other, a continuous strip stretching 170 kilometers across the desert, framed by mirrored walls. No cars, no streets, no intersections, just one long urban corridor where every shop, park, and office sits within a five-minute walk. And for longer trips, an underground train promises to take you from end to end in just 20 minutes. By late 2021, the first excavation work had already begun. Today, construction crews are focused on the central section, with Saudi officials saying the first five kilometers should be ready by 2030. The ultimate vision? Space for 9 million residents packed into a city only 200 meters wide, the equivalent of squeezing New York and Los Angeles into a strip thinner than two city blocks. Woven City, Japan Toyota announced Woven City in 2020 calling it a living laboratory for future technology. Built at the base of Mount Fuji on the site of a former Toyota factory, it covers about 175 acres and is designed to test how people, robots, and self-driving cars interact in daily life. Construction started in February 2021, and by 2025, the first residents began moving in, mostly Toyota employees and their families. The plan is to grow the community to about 2,000 residents all living in smart homes powered by hydrogen fuel cells and equipped with sensors that track energy use, health, and mobility. The streets are woven into three layers, one for fast autonomous vehicles, one for bicycles and personal mobility, and one just for pedestrians. That separation keeps traffic flowing while making the city safe for walking. Delivery robots move on their own, homes are built with wood and robotic construction methods, and artificial intelligence manages everything from waste recycling to traffic signals. Most cities add technology onto aging infrastructure. Woven City is being designed from scratch as a permanent experiment. Every family living there is part of a test group, generating real data that Toyota and its partners will use to refine how future cities operate. Oceanics Busan, South Korea Busan unveiled Oceanics in 2019 with the United Nations as the world's first prototype for a floating city. When sea levels rise and coastal cities flood, the idea is simple. Build communities that float instead of sink. The design uses hexagonal floating platforms, each the size of a city block, that lock together like puzzle pieces. On top sit homes, gardens, and public plazas. Each platform generates its own renewable energy, captures and recycles water, and even produces food. The first community is planned for about 10,000 residents. In 2022, the first prototype platform was completed and placed in the water. Construction has since advanced in phases, with engineers testing how these platforms handle storms and daily living. The material is even designed to self-heal underwater, strengthening with time rather than decaying. Oceanics doesn't aim to be a giant metropolis. It's a pilot. A proof of concept. If it works in Busan, the same design could be replicated in flood-prone cities around the world. From Miami to Jakarta, instead of spending billions on seawalls or land reclamation, governments could drop in floating neighborhoods that expand as needed. Maldives Floating City Maldives. The Maldives announced its floating city in 2021. And for this nation, it is not about futuristic branding. It's survival. The country is the lowest-lying nation on Earth with most of its land just a meter above sea level. As the oceans rise, entire islands are at risk. The Maldives' floating city sits just 10 minutes from the capital Malay, designed in a pattern that looks like brain coral. 5,000 housing units rest on floating platforms tethered to the seabed, but buoyant enough to rise and fall with the waves. Instead of roads, there are canals. Boats replace cars. Boardwalks replace highways. Construction started in 2022, and the first residents are expected by 2027. At full size, it will house about 20,000 people. Dutch engineers who specialize in floating architecture are behind the design, ensuring it doesn't damage coral reefs and can handle storms. For the Maldives, this is not optional. They can't hold back the sea, but with floating cities, they can adapt to it. If it works, it may become a blueprint for coastal communities worldwide. Nusantara, Indonesia. In 2019, Indonesia announced it would relocate its capital from Jakarta to a brand new city called Nusantara. The reason was obvious. Jakarta is sinking. Overcrowded, flood-prone, and polluted, it couldn't sustain the government long-term. Nusantara is being built in East Kalimantan, on the island of Borneo. Construction began in 2022, and by August 2024, Indonesia held its Independence Day celebration there to showcase progress. Civil servants are expected to move in starting in 2025, with the population reaching 2 million by 2045. 
It's designed as a smart forest capital. 75% of the land will remain green. Power will come from renewable energy. Transit will be autonomous and electric. Sensors, 5G, and AI traffic systems will manage utilities and infrastructure from the ground up. Mazdar City, United Arab Emirates. Mazdar City outside Abu Dhabi is one of the earliest futuristic city projects. Announced in 2006, construction began in 2008 with the goal of building the world's first zero-carbon city. Narrow shaded streets were aligned to catch desert winds, cooling the air naturally. Solar panels cover rooftops and a massive solar farm powers much of the site. Instead of private cars, Mazdar experimented with small driverless pods running on underground tracks. The original goal was ambitious, a city of 50,000 residents producing no carbon emissions at all. But after the global financial crisis, progress slowed and the project was scaled back. By 2016, only a fraction of the city had been completed. The master plan was extended, with completion pushed out to 2030. Even so, Mazdar today is not a ghost town. Thousands of people live and work there, including students at the Mazdar Institute and employees of renewable energy companies. It has become a hub for clean technology research, and new phases continue to be built. In 2025, autonomous shuttles and delivery robots are being tested inside the city, keeping the original vision of innovation alive even if the zero-carbon dream was never fully realized. Mazdar City shows both sides of futuristic planning, bold ambition that inspires other projects, and the practical limits of cost and time. It didn't become the perfect green city, but it still stands as one of the first serious attempts to build the future in the desert. New Clark City, Philippines New Clark City was launched in 2016 as the Philippines' answer to Manila's overcrowding. Located about 100 kilometers north of the capital, it covers nearly 9,500 hectares and is designed to house 1.2 million residents. The first phase was completed in 2019 and showcased during the Southeast Asian Games with a government complex, housing, and a 20,000-seat athletic stadium. That phase proved the city could host large-scale events with functioning infrastructure. Long-term plans include dedicated green corridors, smart water management systems, and a digital backbone for traffic, utilities, and disaster response. The city is being marketed as both climate resilient and investor friendly, with space set aside for universities, business districts, and mixed use housing. Today, expansion continues, with further phases under construction and international partners contributing expertise in smart infrastructure. While it may take decades before New Clark City reaches its full vision, it already serves as a working example of how Southeast Asia is trying to build its future cities. Busan Eco Delta Smart City, South Korea. Busan's Eco Delta Smart City was first announced in 2018 as one of South Korea's flagship smart city projects. Built on reclaimed land along the Nakdong River Delta, it covers about 11.8 square kilometers and is designed to house more than 76,000 residents once fully completed. Construction began in 2019, with the government positioning it as a testbed for new technologies, everything from water management to robotics. By 2022, the first smart village was completed, home to about 50 families chosen to live in fully automated houses. These homes feature AI-powered energy systems, appliances connected through the Internet of Things, and even delivery robots operating within the neighborhood. The city is organized around water, Canals, wetlands, and artificial waterways run through the development, not only for aesthetics, but also for flood control and eco-restoration. Each district is being designed with green energy integration, smart grids, and autonomous public transport. EcoDelta is also one of South Korea's living laboratories. Universities, companies, and government agencies are all using the site to test technologies in real-world conditions. Unlike projects that stay on the drawing board for decades, EcoDelta already has permanent residents, and more districts are being prepared for expansion.